Hello everyone, I'm Bruce with the Wanna Be Free channel and you're watching part five of the series of Northern Tool Trailer to DIY Overland Trailer for Car Camping. In this video I'm just going to give you an overview of where I'm at on the project and kind of give you some shots of uh, what I've done up to this point. I've been working pretty hard on this project and I've made a lot of progress. So let me uh, turn this camera around and uh, I'll show you what I've got so far. In my last video, I showed that I had it mounted on the trailer, had the sides on it. I've been working on the front and the back. So this is the back and this will be a door. Of course, the door is not installed yet. My next project is to be sanding, sanding the outside, sanding the doors painting around I'm not going to paint the inside I'm going to paint around the, the door frame in case it gets wet and then I'm also going to be filling all these screw holes with uh, putty to try to make it look nice sand it down and then I'll put two maybe three coats of uh, exterior house paint but let me show you some of the bracing or give you a better angle if I can it's turning out a little heavier than I expected just because I got the bracing everything. The last thing I want is this coming apart on the highway at 65 miles an hour or whatever speed it happens to be. But you can see I've doubled the 2 by 2s and I built some corner brackets that I put in each corner to support it and help it stay, stay square in uh, say for instance high wind situation is what I'm thinking. I've got a brace across the top and built some corner brackets out of plywood and those are glued and screwed on there and man you wouldn't believe the rigidity that provided to the framework. Now the front is interesting where I've done a lot of work up here. Again I have uh, doubled and put brackets in the corners top and bottom got brackets down there as well those are the ones that are really providing a lot of strength to help keep it square and I think those are going to be way better than just some uh, L bracket screwed to the 2x2 two two. at least that's my thought anyway but here's a good look at the uh, refrigerator slider I've got it framed out so the refrigerator fits right down on that box and it won't slide forward, backward, or left and right. And you can see here's the space where the batteries will be. And I'm going to have at least an inch and a half the width of one of these boards spacing between the batteries and the uh, refrigerator vents. And the refrigerator vents will be up a little bit higher because of that sliding platform. So I, I think that that will provide adequate ventilation for the refrigerator. Time will tell, but when I put the refrigerator on there and look at it, it looks pretty good. I have not set the batteries in here yet, just because they're heavy. And I don't want to put them in and take them out and put them in and take them out. But boy, the strength is unreal on this. I left the front edge of the skin up a little bit 
and the top will come right here. So I still have to cut the top and then get it glued and screwed on the trailer. But this is what it looks like from the front. So the two openings, the, the top will be fastened on permanently, glued and screwed down. And then the uh, front and back openings are gonna be the openings where we can access all of our gear through the front and through the uh, through the back just the plan we'll see like I said this is all kind of an experiment and I'm designing as I go let me show you the shelf slider so with the refrigerator on there that will slide out so that the entire refrigerator is outside the box and easy access for lifting up the, the lid to the refrigerator get what we need if we're in a campsite or something I I would expect that we're probably going to have that pulled out and just have the refrigerator setting right there unless we uh, are going to leave the camp and go on a walk or whatever we can slide it back in but with it out and open like this while we're at the campground or campsite it'll uh, get plenty of ventilation of course it's when it's cooped up inside that's in question Here's the vent and how that came out that I installed in the floor. And I'll see if I can I can show you how much space you got below there for the vent to work. So it should get plenty of circulation to bring fresh air into the box. And then uh, probably going to be putting my computer fans on the top with the thermostat control to to uh, turn the fans on if it gets real hot inside the box from the refrigerator heat or just from outside heat that's why I'm painting it white to help with that situation here's a shot underneath of the of the vent and how that sits underneath the trailer where it will be drawing fresh air into the trailer So for today on my project, I don't know if I'll videotape it, but I'm going to be doing sanding, sanding down those doors and painting and then uh, filling these screw holes and sanding and, and so forth so I can get ready to paint. I'm kind of wondering about these corners where you have the open edge of the plywood. Since this is not treated plywood, I had somebody ask me about that. I don't know if it should be treated or not, but I'm treating it with uh, a good exterior house paint. I'm hoping that that's going to be adequate. But I thought maybe, uh, I don't know if I'll do this or not, but I could put a one by one angle aluminum corner to really finish that off. And then that would give me a nice edge that I could caulk around to completely seal those corners. But what I've been doing is sand that corner down real nice and if necessary fill any gaps and holes with caulking and then painting and that'll probably be adequate as well which is probably what I'll go with to start with if I see uh, any problems developing with water on those corners I'll have to uh, I'll have to cover them with some kind of a corner corner piece but at the moment I don't plan on doing that I just realized and uh, was hoping these L these uh, light kit is all LEDs on the trailer which is kind of nice and you can see I have about a half inch ridge all the way around the openings both front and back not only added this extra board and gives it strength but it also provides kind of a shelf for the door to fit in so that the uh, so that the doors don't get pushed inside of course and they're super strong they're they're probably way stronger than necessary and a little bit heavier but they're gonna be uh, I, I just don't want any issues when I'm out on the road I want this thing to work as I planned it I don't want to have to be fixing something especially if uh, something was to happen to the box we'd have all of our gear and 
have to cram that all into the van to go get it repaired which I, I don't want to have to do so that's what I'm trying to prevent got the bolts through that go all the way through down through the steel frame and bolt the uh, trailer four on each two on each side and one in the center there right behind the battery box and uh, that's a good look at the the bracing and the framework that I've done inside everything is put together with screws and glue which I think is important when you're talking about a trailer that's bouncing down the road and uh, going through all those vibrations constantly while you're driving now this back piece the plan is to have that door with the hinge at the bottom so as the door swings down I don't know I may hinge it on the side but I thought if I hinge it on the bottom then we could lay that out and use it kind of as a table or a shelf for our camp stove and that sort of thing but we'll see the plan at the moment is to put a hinge at the bottom and that's kind of how I built the doors same thing with the front it'll swing down and rest right on that uh, top of this and it comes out to right about there so we'll barely be able to open that when the van is hooked up to the trailer and it's parked straight but then it's low enough that the shelf will clear the door and we can get to our refrigerator again those sliders will support a hundred pounds so that should be adequate but that's what it looks like guys so far I kind of figured I'd just do an update video I don't know if you guys are getting tired of watching the time-lapse cut and gluing and screwing got a loud lawnmower going by so hopefully that's not too loud for the video I apologize for that and uh, yeah it's coming coming along still a lot a lot of work left to do and I still need to install the batteries and the solar and the charge controller all that kind of stuff so I'm just trying to keep plugging away I gotta have this done by the end of the month or before that would be nice so we could take it out and test it before we take a long road trip with it but I appreciate you watching if you're new to the channel welcome don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe if you want to follow along on my videos Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.